Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom. And I'm Chef Britt with ATBBQ.com. And this is pastrami smoked salmon with everything bagels. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. It is the year 2020. We're living in the future. And to kick off the year, we're going to start with a double whammy recipe. I'm going to be smoking up some pastrami smoked salmon. And I'm going to be making some everything bagels from scratch, which is actually a two-day process, which is perfect for filling in the time for the three-day process of the pastrami salmon. That's right, we gotta get our salmon into a brine, very similar to how we would do a brisket pastrami, but we're gonna be doing it with salmon. Uh, and that's gonna take about 48 hours for it to kind of cure, fake cure. We're not gonna fully cure it, but we're gonna give it a good brine so all those flavors can really soak into the salmon. And then on the third day, we'll be smoking it. So, because of the magic of television, we're able to do this all in one day. We came very prepared, y'all. Let's jump right in. Now we're gonna put together our brine for our salmon. And this is essentially the same pastrami brine that I would use if we were doing brisket for pastrami. Uh, but we're gonna be using it for our salmon, of course. The major difference is no pink salt. We're not adding any pink salt to this. Technically, it's not fully cured. It's really just gonna get that briny flavor. So we're gonna get all the flavor of the pastrami into the salmon and smoke it hot just like we would a fresh salmon. Now to maximize the flavor we get out of our spices, we're gonna toast them in a dry skillet. We're starting with some black peppercorns. We've got some cloves and some juniper berries. These are kind of the hardiest of the spices here. Sort of a medium, medium low heat here. Just gonna start to open up the aromas and the oils in this. Then we'll come in with some fennel seeds and we're adding our spices in the order of hardiness. So the bigger, hardier spices first, the finer, more delicate ones we'll add toward the end. And as soon as we start to get some aroma, and you can see that steam coming off, it's pretty cold outside that is, steam is forming on the surface. We can start to add here our coriander seed. We've got some mustard seed. And that's kind of our flavor base. We're not fully done here. We're gonna add some more stuff to the brine itself once we get the water out here. But these are the spices that need to get toasted off. All right, so just about 60 seconds once we get everything in there. But what you're looking for is the aroma. It should start to smell very aromatic. I'm gonna take that off the heat. Also got a cinnamon stick. We're gonna crush that down and add it. And then all of those toasted spices are gonna go into our boiling water. All right, so here we have three quarts of water that we brought up to a boil. I'm gonna add those toasted spices in there. And then just a few more ingredients to add. We've got some cloves of garlic, about a half dozen of those. We'll just crush those in the pot, one bay leaf. We've got some mace, which if you can't get a hold of mace, you could use nutmeg in place. Some ground ginger. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of heat in the form of some red chili flakes. All right, so these are the very specific pastrami aromas and flavors that we expect to go with pastrami. We're gonna add to that our brine base. We're using the Cattleman's Grill Butcher House Brine, a really versatile brine, but essentially, Salt, sugar, garlic, onion, all good things. Now we've got enough of that brine base for a five quart batch here. Like I mentioned, this is three quarts of water. The other two quarts are gonna come in the form of ice. Now obviously we don't wanna throw a hot brine on top of our salmon because we'll start to cook our salmon. So instead of waiting for it to cool down, we're just gonna cut it with ice and we'll get to that five quart mark uh, using about four pounds of ice to our three quarts of liquid. So just a couple minutes here of this sort of simmering away until that brine mixture has dissolved. We can turn that off. We're gonna add our four pounds of ice to our eight quart briner bucket. And then the hot brine on top. And we'll just stir this until all that ice is melted. There we go, nothing to it. Feel the temperature coming down. Right away, that puts it at a safe level so that once we slide the salmon in and then throw it in the fridge, it's out of the danger zone. So two and a half pound filet of salmon here. Pin bones have been removed. The skin is on, not terribly important, but that's the way we're cooking it or brining it today. I'm gonna go with the skin facing inward. That way we can get as much coverage on that skin as possible. Just wrap it right around this and then we'll lock it into place. So now 48 hour brine, gonna get all that flavor packed into the salmon. 
So now we're gonna make some bagel dough. It's a fairly simple lean dough, so let's just hop right in. I'm gonna start off with about nine and a half ounces of cold water, and then we're gonna need about one pound of double O flour. And this flour is really great, it has a wonderful uh, protein strength that we'll need to create our chewy dough. Um, it's also really great for long fermentation times. So this dough is actually gonna sit in the fridge after it's been mixed together for about a day or two, depending on what your schedule is. So I'm gonna add this all right in on top of that water. I'm gonna get my dough hook attached. And we're just gonna mix this on low speed until the flour is hydrated. We don't see any more patches of flour. Okay, so it's picked up most everything around the bowl. Let's give it a look. So you can see this dough is pretty underdeveloped. Um, lots of creases. If I was to take a little piece here and try and stretch it out into a window pane, it would break pretty easily. So what we're gonna do now is called an auto lease. So this auto lease uh, performs a couple functions. One is to allow the flour to fully hydrate and another one is to let naturally occurring enzymes help break down the flour. Um, during this process, the dough is actually going to create its own gluten structure with us um, without having to do any of the hard work. So we're gonna give this 30 minutes covered with plastic wrap before we uh, finish mixing the dough. So I'm gonna get the dough back in here and while I let it rest, I'm gonna go ahead and allow the uh, salt, some brown sugar, and instant dry yeast to just sit on top of the dough. That way I don't forget it before I start mixing it again. It's been about 30 minutes now. We're gonna go ahead and take our plastic wrap off and get this uh, mixing. But first I wanna show you guys a little bit about what's happened to the dough while it's been resting. We haven't done anything to it other than just let it sit, but it's already gotten a, a smoother, more elastic texture. I don't think it's gonna take very much longer to get the uh, gluten strength that we need. All right, so we're just gonna mix this on low speed until we get the right gluten strength. We're looking for a very developed uh, gluten. So it's gonna take at least six minutes to start. It's been about six minutes now. I'm gonna check the gluten strength. Pull off a little piece of dough. And we're gonna slowly stretch it here. Mm, might need a little more work here. So I'm just easing out, stretching it. Until we're able to get a pretty thin sheet of dough here that we can almost see through. The next step we're gonna do is divide up this dough. I've got about 742 grams here, so that's gonna give me in six portions of about 125 grams a piece. Okay, so the trick here, my dough is kind of wanting to slide around, so my special trick that I have is I get a little wet piece of paper towel just to uh, dampen my surface here and then my dough will have more friction and I'll be able to cinch the bottom as I turn this into a smooth round ball. What I'm trying to do here when I'm shaping is sort of pinch the bottom and allow the dough to fold in on itself while creating a smooth top. So this is just gonna take a little practice if you're not familiar. And use the heel of your hand to sort of cinch the bottom. What we're looking for in the end is a tight seal. So we're almost there. I'd say that's pretty good. All right. So you wanna just make sure you don't have any open seams like that. And you can actually go ahead and pinch the bottom if that's a little easier for you. Okay, so now that I've got this dough pre-shaped, I'm gonna allow it to bench rest or relax 
covered under some plastic wrap here for about 15 minutes before we come back and shape the final bagel shape. We're gonna keep this pretty simple and we're just gonna poke a hole right into the center. And then we're just gonna roll the dough around here. And I actually like to use my whole hand because I can feel how thick each part of the ring is. I'm trying to do this so you guys can all see. And these are gonna turn into pretty good sized bagels. So I wanna make sure that I have a large enough uh, ring to where when they bake up, they don't shrink up into little uh, belly buttons per se. So we're gonna make sure that these are at least four inches wide. If I was to sit here and go like this, it might find a weak spot and then I'll have an uneven bagel in the end. So I like to use my whole hand as I work the ring around my hand. So I'll just put that there to rest while I shape the rest here. All right, so we're gonna cover these once more, but now it's time for them to rest in the fridge overnight or up to 36 hours, depending on your schedule. All right, so now we have some dough here that has been resting for about 36 hours. So we're ready for the next step, which is boiling the bagels. Okay, so I've got a pot of boiling water here with just a few inches of water. Um, and also I've added about two thirds cup of brown sugar, and that's gonna help with caramelization. Um, so what we're gonna do so we're gonna work in batches and drop one bagel in at a time, maybe two. There we go. And we're gonna give them about 30 seconds on each side. All right, so with the slotted spoon, I'm just going to flip them and give them the uh, 30 seconds more that they need. Working with a slotted spoon will help you get that bagel out. And then the next part, after it, right after it comes out, we're going to season it with the Cattleman's Grill Everything Seasoning. So while it's still wet, you just dig it in there, move it around, get your bagel nice and seasoned up. Put it right back. Okay, so the purpose of boiling the bagels is to pre-gelatinize the starches on the outside of the bagel, and that will give us that characteristic chew that we're looking for. All right, so we are going to bake these directly on the grill grate, right on top um, for maximum browning. If I was to do this in a sheet pan, um, the heat just doesn't circulate in the same way, so we would just get pale bagels in the end. So this is gonna be the best way to get a nice crusty brown bagel. So today we have the grill set at 400 degrees. I'm gonna put these right in the center of the top grate. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. We're gonna give them a look-see here and just see how they're doing. I think they're looking great. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a rotation just to keep things even. We're gonna give them probably another five to 10 minutes here. Oh, these are looking great. Beautiful coloring. I'm gonna go ahead and temp the internal temperature. We're right exactly at 212, which is perfect. We don't wanna go any further. So let's go ahead and pull these off. All right, how we do? Man, these are looking great. Oh yeah, beautiful. I love the little blistering in there. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, I'm gonna crank this down, that's good? Yeah. So check this out. This is what we're looking for uh, with a really great bagel is this blistering on the surface. Um, and the browning is really great too. I'm really excited to cut into these. You got a nice shine on them. Those are definitely gonna have that, that like textbook bagel chew. So before we slice into them, we're just gonna let them completely cool and let the crumb set. Yeah, we got time to do that for sure. We've turned the grill down to 250, so it's at smoking temperatures now. Uh, and we can get our salmon on there to smoke in the meanwhile, these will be cooling off. We can put it all together once the salmon's done. So now we're gonna pull our salmon filet out of our pastrami brine. It's been soaking for 48 hours, and this is really where it's getting the majority of its flavor. Now this isn't gonna be fully cured. This isn't like a cold smoked salmon where it's hard to the touch. It's something that we're gonna hot smoke today. 
But what it does have is plenty of salt and plenty of flavor packed into the filet itself. All right, so we're just gonna kind of drip dry this. We can take some paper towels here and soak up the extra. Yeah, instantly getting the aroma though. I mean, that's, that's the smell that I associate with pastrami for sure. All of those herbs and spices that we threw into the brine two days ago. So this has firmed up just slightly for sure over the last two days, but it's definitely not all the way firm. It's definitely gonna have that sort of fresh smoked salmon texture to it. Now we're gonna do a little bit of seasoning on the surface as well. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of mustard to the surface. Not totally necessary, but I like the little tang and the color that it gives. And it's gonna help for that rub to really stick to the outside. Now for the rub, we're gonna be using our California tri-tip, just a great steak seasoning. Think of like Montreal steak, those sorts of flavors. But we're gonna also gonna do an equal amount of coriander seeds. And this is one of those characteristic flavors that you get with pastrami. That coriander really sets it off. And then we've got the base of the steak rub to add some salt and some savory. I'm a little heavy on that one right there, so we'll take some of that out. So I'm just combining this into a spice grinder so that we can get a nice coarse texture. We kind of already have that coarse texture with the Cattleman's, but we want to break down those coriander seeds. So again, going pretty coarse with it. We want this to have some good texture on the outside. But as you can see, the coriander itself is broken down. All right, that's all there is to it. We're just gonna give this a couple of minutes to kind of attach the surface and we'll get it on the smoker. Now you've already seen this once today, but we're gonna be cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S. Britt was baking it at a hot 400 degree temperature. We've dropped that down to 250. One of the great things about this pellet grill is you can get your baking and your smoking done all on the same grill. Now I'm just gonna leave this on the wire rack because it's easy to move it that way. At this point, we're just gonna let it smoke away until it hits an internal temperature of 140 degrees. The salmon's been smoking for two hours now. The internal temperature has come right up to 140 degrees. So let's take a look and kind of look for those characteristics that tell us it's done beyond just the temperature. So you can see we've got a really nice crust on the outside here. This has just been soaking up the smoke. And then some of the things that sort of tell us this is done is you start to see where some of that liquid is kind of bubbling out the top now. We're gonna take the temperature kind of in the deepest part of the thickest part of that salmon. And look at that, right at 141 now. This is perfectly done, we're ready to pull this off. Now this salmon you could serve immediately. You could eat it nice and piping hot, but it's also great at room temperature. And honestly, even if you throw it in the fridge, I'll snack on it for days. It goes great on salads once it's cold. But now that this is all done and the bagels are baked off, let's just bring it all together. We did a lot of hard work, Tom, actually, what was nice about this recipe, both of these, is that they're pretty minimally involved. Yeah, not really hard work at all. Just a lot of time, really. Yep. Um, I know how I want to eat mine, and you told me it was not the best way to eat it, so you do you. Okay. Wow, did you work at Panera? <laughs> Boy, did I. <laughs> all right, you want some cream cheese? Duh. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Cream cheese, we can agree on that. Yes. What goes on top of cream cheese? Uh, let's do capers and red onions. Okay, we're on the same page so far. Yep, capers, good idea. Nice and briny. Okay, what a great texture. Like it's definitely a little bit more dense than a fresh salmon because of that 48 hour brine but it's still just super juicy. And that pastrami crust on the outside looks awesome. It smells great. Cheers. Looks pretty good, cheers. Ooh. That's mm -hmm. amazing. It was really good. The crust on that salmon, man, that texture goes so great with that cream cheese on there. I mean, it's pretty much got everything you want flavor-wise, texture-wise. It's all there. It's smoky. Yeah, this hits on so many levels for me. The texture, nice salt level. I don't know. I just want to keep eating it. The chew on that bagel is incredible. Killed it. Thanks, Tom.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. And if you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see us cook, let us know in the comment section down below. Let's be good to one another. Let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head on over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.